It is 8 a.m. on Sunday, January 16th, 2022, and I'm Captain Perry here with you in San Diego, California. Welcome back to the Ocean Capable Small Sailboat Channel. The name really is straight to the point, isn't it? That's because my mission is to build a strong, trailerable, 14-foot sailboat that's watertight and custom-built to cross oceans. It is constructed of PVC foam core between fiberglass skins. This is the foam sandwich construction method. Some unique features of the design are a scow bow, twin keels, and a Jungstrom rig. Check out episodes six and seven for information on scow bows and twin keels, and you'll understand my design choices on those. Now, the Jungstrom rig is quite rare these days, especially in America, but it's marvelous for small boats like mine. The mast spins furling up the sail around the mast. The captain can easily control the sail area from the safety of the cockpit with the main sheet and one furling line. Another advantage, the mast is freestanding. That means no messy spider web of stays securing the mast to the deck. You can get away with that with a small boat. As my friend Sven Irvin says, small boats, small problems. In episode 15, I glassed in a pair of longitudinals that will stiffen the bottom of the boat and support the floor of the main cabin. Here's where we started the week. I have those main cabin longitudinals installed. The main bulkhead and transom are up with more structural grid built into the cargo hold. And she's waiting for a mast step and more frames to be installed. Subscribe and watch me build my dream boat one step at a time. In this episode, you'll see me working on the mast step, which supports the mast where it hits the hull after passing through the deck. All right, I've just finished doing the remaining fillets on these longitudinals. I had 285 centimeters left to do, or 9.3 feet. So that was all of this. And here, and up this corner. And then from here over to here on the port side. And that took seven pumps of epoxy, which means one pump of epoxy gets me 1.3 feet or 41 centimeters of fillets. Now, while I wait for that to gel, I'm gonna start on making the kind of foundation of the mast base. It'll be a piece of plywood that'll go here so that uh, the downward pressure of the mast isn't just in one spot, it's spread out. All right, I cut this piece out of plywood. I'm gonna call this the mast, mast base foundation because this is gonna be the piece that contours to the bottom of the hull and then the other pieces above it are gonna try to be level. I've marked this every 10 centimeters and I'm going to make a cut more than halfway through the material so that it'll bend to the hole. All right, I got the cuts in there. And here's a dry fit. And it conforms to the uh, hole shape just fine if I put a little weight in there when I epoxy it. But we'll epoxy that later after I finish fiberglassing this work. Okay, now finally the longitudinals, I can honestly say, are completely fiberglassed in. Next, I wanna attach this mast base foundation with thickened epoxy. All right, here we go. I picked up this product called G10 
and it's a fiberglass laminate. It's like layers of fiberglass uh, soaked in epoxy resin, and then they let it cure under pressure and heat. So this will be a really good um, core replacement and to use for backing plates. So like I'll cut uh, circles of this, like little donuts of it, to replace the core where the keel bolts will go through and where cleats will go through, any areas like that. Right now I'm making backing plates for the rudder gudgeons. Wow, what dense stuff. Uh, it was tough to cut and I actually, I think I ruined this um, jigsaw blade, which is made for metal. It was pretty good at cutting acrylic, but it kind of really dulled on this stuff, which is great. I want it to be really tough. So I got this sheet and this sheet of HD, HDPE at my local plastic shop. It's just uh, two dollars a pound, so between the two, it was fifteen bucks. And what this is, this will make the um, this should be should be good to make the bearings for the spinning mast. So I've made this shorter wedged piece of quarter inch plywood that'll fill this gap here, and then this one will go on top here. So these will be epoxied together. And this will be removable, so you could just take it off. But of course, the uh, bolt, two bolts will come through here, and the nuts and washers will hold it on. And I got another one here for down there. But that's about as far as I can go with this today because uh, I was just realizing when I put the cockpit on, we're going to have another fillet right here and 1708. So I'll have to wait, but it's good to get a get a little bit of it done early. And of course, had to hit it with a sander to give it those lovely rounded edges. So this week I spent a lot of time drawing diagrams to try and figure out how I'm going to make the mast base just right. The first one um, looked good, but then I realized um, that I want to have some mast rake. So that's the angle the mast uh, leans back. And uh, I decided on about four degrees mast rake. So then I had to make drawing number two. And this got the angle in there. And when I was thinking about how am I gonna make this, um, the plywood on the bottom give me the correct angle because the hull is curving up, but it's curving up more than four degrees. So I need to add in some plywood to correct that. So then I made uh, diagram number three here, which um, kind of blew it up larger. And each grid is one centimeter square. So you can see at the bottom, there's the very bottom is the hull bottom, of course. And then you got the mast base foundation, which is already epoxied on down here. That just uh, that just contours with the hull. Now the next pieces are going to be L1, which is like a little wedge. Then L2 will be longer, It'll be 26 centimeters square. And both of those I have to shave some material off so they fit in to that contour just right and give me the four degrees I need. Now using that third diagram, I figured out these numbers. So my L1 is just a little wedge, 7.9 centimeters long and 0.7 centimeters on the forward end, the full thickness on the aft end, which is it's half inch plywood. And then L2 is going to rest on top of that. The back of L2 will be here. So that I need 0.3 centimeters on the forward tip. And then I come back. 9.1 centimeters and from that point to there we got to shave that off too and uh, this will be 26 by 26 centimeters so here I've drawn it onto my plywood this will be L2 forward you can see it's a square this will be L1 and so this will go underneath L2 right here 
All right, so we've got L1, and then here's L2, which will be a square. And what I've done is mark, make kind of a triangle with a pencil, and this is the part that I need to remove. Same on this one. I don't know if you can see that pencil line. And then I put some straight lines on here as a guide, and using the circular saw, I'll try to set it to the depth of this pencil line and go down this line, and make a few lines like that. For using a circular saw, I think I did pretty good on the depth of these cuts, matching the line. Now I just need to remove this material. So the options I have available to me are an orbital sander, a power planer, or a router. And uh, I think I'll try a router. I haven't tried to do this that way yet. using the router I just use the sander and those circular saw cuts are a guide so I just sand down until I'm around even with those cuts and any imperfections thick and epoxy will take care of. So far this has just been a drawing and this is where theory meets reality. So let's see, I know this is the back where the back of frame C2 will sit and from my drawing I can see that about 3.25 centimeters forward should be the aft edge of these pieces. So here's the bottom wedge, L1. And then here's L2. Now on top of this will, will be two or three more stacks of smaller squares, and two of them will be uh, will have a hole cut in them to kind of hug the mast tube. But so let's see, let's see how we did. That to me looks pretty good, what I'd imagine for four degrees. It's two hours after I did this this epoxy work and now I'm going to take out these nails I put in and I put them in so that the work wouldn't slide back which it tends to do when you're using a bunch of epoxy and some flat surfaces it wants to slide down so let's take these out I've heard that if you dip your finger in some paint thinner, 
you can smooth out where the nail came out. So let's just try. Now that the mask step is in, I can install frame C2, which will sit just aft here. I've already started building it today, but we'll save that for next week. If you live on the West Coast and think you might be able to help out with the project of fabricating the twin steel keels and smelting lead for the attached ballast, please reach out to me. I'd love to help and could really use it. Uh, if you haven't already, please join the OCSS Facebook group. I keep it updated with really cool design drawings and progress photos. I really think you'll find it interesting. Okay, that's it for this week. See you next time. Mr. Bordell, let's make all preparations. We're getting on the way. That guy sure likes to carry things. Hey, uh, what's your name, buddy? Home. Public, get back to your station or I'll have you shot from a mutineer! Well, shoot something!